Wow, wow, wow. About two months ago, Denise, a member of our Actuary Accelerator community and former stats teacher, let us know in our members only WhatsApp group that she got four actuarial jobs four actuarial job offers, that is. Now, I know that most future actuaries would be happy with just one offer, but when Denise told us that she got four, I absolutely had to have her on the channel to share some advice and tips with you so that you could get an actuarial job and hopefully four offers as well. And by the way, she did this all with just one exam passed. That is incredible. I am Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty details, Details, let's get a little bit of background information on Denise. She actually found out about the actuarial career in a pretty unique way. So um, I got my degree in mathematics, career mathematics, back in 2016. And I knew I always wanted to do math, but I went into teaching because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do exactly. So I thought teaching would be a great, you know, way to get my feet wet on, on um, um, and actually, you know, learning more about what potential jobs. So as a teacher, um, I loved everything about a teacher, but I knew that I wanted to go to grad school to eventually, you know, um, find something else that I was interested in. And um, I started grad school last year, and that is how I found out about the actual career. It's not something I knew about at all. And um, I found it while I was researching for jobs to present to my students, because um, they were asking me, they, I was teaching statistics at the time, and I started grad school and everything. It was a lot going on. And um, and I found out about the actuarial profession while I was telling them about it. I realized it's something I wanted to do. And I was like, this is it. I found what I really wanted to do. And um, that's how I got started in the journey. And I immediately started researching, you know, what, what tools do I need to be a great candidate? And I found the AAC. If you don't know what the Actuary Accelerator community is, basically this is our program where we teach future actuaries how to gain the skills and qualifications that they need in order to become top candidates for actuarial positions and get their first full-time job. In today's competitive market, this is a really valuable resource because it's specifically geared towards career changers and people that are unable to get an internship because the program teaches them what they need to do instead without that actuarial internship experience experience so that they can still be really highly qualified in-demand candidates for actuarial positions. Now in the Actuary Accelerator community and so many other times on this channel, I have talked about getting a stepping stone position to show employers that you have some relevant experience. For Denise, her stepping stone position was her teaching career. So I asked her which qualifications really came in beneficial during interviews that were gained through her stepping stone position. Um, I think the biggest ones were uh the communication aspect you know as a teacher you learn to communicate effectively you learn to read your audience you learn to you know adjust you know in the moment because as you're teaching you can't just you know stick to a script you have to read the room you have to you realize that you're teaching to different levels of, of understanding you know different learning styles and I think that whenever I explained that to a lot of the during my interviews that really caught the attention of some of the um um people who were interviewing me, the fact that you have that, which is something that, that comes from experience. You know, um, it's not something that you're born with or you have to really, you know, once you've been doing it a while, you you, you get a sense of, of, of how exactly to adjust in what you're explaining without letting the person know that you've adjusted, if that makes sense. Um, but apart from the communication style, the multitasking, the prioritizing, you know, knowing how to, you know, prioritize different um, projects all at once. Um, I was also, as a teacher, I wasn't just a teacher. I was team leader. So I was tasked with designing the curriculum. So I had to, you know, project management kind of, and that really helped um, in, 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 in my interviews. For Denise to have four job offers, I knew she had to have some other qualifications that really helped her get these actuarial job offers. Just teaching experience alone probably wouldn't be enough to see such huge success. So here's what she said when I asked her about how many exams she had passed. I had one exam passed, exam P, which I took in September. I, do, I was part of the warrior group, the first warrior group in the, from the AAC. And um, I just had one exam passed, yeah. 
Even I was shocked to learn that she only had one exam passed when she got all these job offers. That just goes to show and prove that actuarial exams shouldn't be your only focus. But if you've watched this channel for a while now, or if you are a member of the AAC, you probably already knew that, right? On that note, you've probably heard me talk about the technical skills that future actuaries need in order to get noticed for actuarial positions. I was surprised to learn that Denise actually grew up learning Excel the same way that I did. A technical skills I had, um, I did have Excel background because um, I worked in my father's company business and since I was very, very young and I, you know, I developed those Excel skills, but nothing compared to what I learned from Excel Ninja. I, I was part of the Excel Ninja um, course, I think it is, that is offered periodically and it blew my mind. I thought I knew Excel until I joined the Excel Ninja. It was so great you know, um, learning all these, you know, different functions, because I had used a lot of, you know, maybe count ifs and, 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 and sums and basic formulas, but the way that you guys presented it um, was a way that was really transferable. So I was able to apply it to my business, my father's business, and able to use the projects. And that really, really helped, especially uh, during the interviews, I could talk about the projects that you guys presented and that I did. And the fact that it was something that, um, not like you know your typical courses where you have a project and then the video solution where you can just like if you get stuck you run to the video solution no we had to really work it out we had to really you know use the skills we learned and then ask questions if needed which was very very helpful but nothing like oh let me just look at the video solution real quick and that was a really big plus in my book that's how i really you know um, got to see if i learned or what i knew so it was great now, after going through four or five interviews, I knew that Denise had to have seen some trends in the type of questions that they were asking. So I had to ask her about that. So I got a lot of soft skills, behavioral type of questions at the beginning. Um, they were really trying to see how you could communicate. Um, I did get a lot of scenario based, you know, what will you do um, type of questions. A funny question that I got. <laughs> which was, I think it might be related to a case type of study or like a brain teaser. It was um, how many bow ties are sold in a year in the United States? Yeah. Wow, that's a tough one. How did yeah. you answer that? Um, I basically, you know, started, you know, I broke it down into different, you know, I said, all right, let's focus on population first, you know, who buys bow ties? And then I broke it down to like, okay, there's a, a there's so many population, so many billion, 300 billion people in in the US, you know, and then half of those, you know, theoretically speaking are males. So let's focus on males. And then from there, I kind of like averaged out how many bow ties, you know, a male would need in his lifetime or in a year, you know, thinking about like maybe, you know, weddings, how many weddings can they go to or, or events or if they're businessmen, you know, so a lot of factors to, to include in there. And then slowly but surely, I, I worked my way through through the problem. <laughs> That bow tie question might seem kind of odd because you're probably wondering why an employer would possibly ask that during an interview. But really, these types of questions are asked in order to test your logical thinking skills. They really want to see how you think on the spot and what logistical information you bring in and the math that you use in order to arrive to some answer. Now, really the answer that you get isn't important. They don't care about that. They probably don't even know the answer themselves. They're really just testing your logical thinking here. And you might come across interview questions that are very similar to this one or other ones that are asked in a completely different way, but they're still testing your logical answers. Now, when I was talking to Denise prior to this interview, I learned that she had actually quit her teaching job before she even started becoming an actuary. So can you imagine how scary that would be? Quitting a job before you even have another one lined up. So I had to ask Denise what gave her the motivation to really pursue the career and go all in, all in enough to quit her job. Here's what she said. AAC. I read about the, yeah, I definitely, I completed, you know, in June was whenever I, I finished my contract and I learned about the AAC early on in the year. And I, I was looking at the phases. So my goal was to quit and then get a stepping stone position um, based off of what I was learning in the AAC. And I thought that that was a really good, you know, way to go. And I never expected that I would just skip that whole phase. But um, that is what really motivated me too. I was like, okay, this this plan is so laid out. The, the phases are so well explained that I feel like I can follow these and 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 it won't be that big of a risk. And that is what you know prompted me to to quit in in June. <laughs> 
Now here's another twist in Denise's story. All along, she had been applying to internship positions. She didn't think that she'd be qualified enough to get a full-time actuarial job. I actually applied all the jobs, the 10 applications I sent out were for internships. I never thought that I could even be considered for an entry level. I thought yeah, I need more exams passed, but so I applied for internships because a lot of them said you needed one exam, which I had. And throughout that process, as I moved along the, the, the rounds, during the final rounds is when I was offered, hey, would you like to be full-time instead? And I was like, wow, <laughs> yes, definitely. So the four offers that I got were originally for internships, but one of them stayed an internship. Let me correct, I'm sorry. The One of the companies, they did offer me an internship, but the other three started out as internships that turned into um, full-time offers. Now, Denise has been a member of the Actuary Accelerator community since March of 2021. So I had to ask her what she would say to a future actuary like you if they were considering becoming a member of the AAC. I would say don't, don't think about it. Join now. Not only doesn't matter what phase you are in your, maybe you're just thinking about it. Maybe you just want to know more about it. All of that is available in the AAC, whether, you know, whether you already have a, a couple exams passed, you know. Um, I think the AAC has been really, really, ex well, it's what prompted, it's why I am here, to be honest. Um, you have so many resources available to you. You have even courses, full courses um, that, you know, you wouldn't have to pay for. You know, it, it's part of the, being a member. And the biggest, most amazing thing is the support you have. You know, though I there's a WhatsApp group that, you know, sometimes I don't really write a lot, but I, everything I read on there is, you know, at the beginning was just so uplifting and and maybe some people ask questions that I have and I was too shy to ask and, you know, all of that. It's just and just to be part of to already be part of a of, of, of community with people who have the same goals as you, you know, it's just it's a sense of belonging, you know, before starting and um to me i mean that's what i would say i would say don't think about it join and 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 learn all about what it is to be an actuary before you make a big commitment or use the resources they have and keep going you know that's one of the things that so many future actuaries really underestimate. It's the value of having a community of other people there to inspire you and motivate you when things get tough. The actuarial journey is long, it's difficult, and having that community of other people that are going through this at the exact same time is so incredibly beneficial. Like the other day, someone wrote, hey, I, I can't do it, I'm just frustrated. And then you got a swarm of, of members saying, I went through the same process, you know, you can do it too take a break take a week you know something is that that you don't have like family members or you don't have friends who might be going through the same thing as you so the fact that you have that and what if I'm too shy to say it, but someone else said it I'm like it uplifts me as well so I think it's it's such an important part of your actuarial journey to have that community be part of it before and it, it'll even help you in the, in the long run when you're an actuary just to you know you can give back to those who gave much to you when you needed it. Huge thank you to Denise for sharing all of that amazing advice with us. If you are a future actuary, you need to know that passing exams, getting your first actuarial job and becoming fully qualified is 100% possible for you. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Here at Etched Actuarial, we 100% believe that if you become a top candidate for actuarial positions, then you will get hired. Denise, along with so many members of the Actuary Accelerator community, have proven that to be true over and over again. This channel has over 180 videos for you to watch to help you become a better actuarial candidate and to help you get your actuarial job. So make sure you subscribe right down below. Click that subscribe button and the like button if you want. And I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.